Okay, Scott Laird, one of my favorite people, one of my favorite teachers, one of my favorite administrators. Scott, how are you doing? Family's okay, mother, dad, daughters, sons, wives? Everybody. Everyone everyone is great. Uh, we just got home from my son's wedding in Huntsville, Alabama. He married a lovely girl. And uh, Amelia, my daughter, was there. She got a weekend off uh, from her two children, Archie and Penelope. And uh, we, a grand time was had by all. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now remember, this is all about you. Take us to college, okay? You're in, we're, tell us real quick where you went to college, et cetera, and then from there, take the narrative. So I, I grew up in Northern New Jersey. I was a, a product of uh, quality public schools. And I went to a state college in Pennsylvania because I wanted to be a teacher. I, I knew I wanted to be a teacher since I was in sixth grade. So I went to Westchester State College, which is now school, Westchester which University. Which school? And, I had some uh, friends that went there. hundred years ago, it was called Westchester State Teachers state College. Teachers College. Yep. And um, I did some graduate work in New Jersey at Drew University, where I started my teaching career at the Peck School in Morristown. I taught fourth grade for three years and uh, coached uh, middle school sports. And then I um, wanted to set out uh, and start a new chapter of my life. So I threw a bunch of uh, resumes down Florida way and I got a call from Walter Butler one afternoon and he asked me if I was going to be coming down to Florida soon and I, I told him I was coming down over spring vacation so I came in and interviewed uh, the job and I'm fortunate that he uh, offered me the position. You want to know something and I remember this very vividly Scott. I'm trying to think where it was. You were the head of the upper school okay you were the head of the upper school and I was standing down in front of the school getting for something and your mom and dad were there and you introduced me to your mom and dad. Okay. And then you had, you were going out to lunch or something, but you had to go back to your office for something. So I was there talking to your dad and, and we were talking about this or that and about, and I remember I told him, I congratulated on your being head of the upper school. But I said, and I was very sincere and I still am. I said, um, Although I'm sorry to see, in a way, I'm sorry to see he got that job. He's an administrator because I said, he belongs in a classroom. He belongs in a classroom. That's where he belongs and everything. And I remember your dad, <laughs> I guess he didn't know how to take it, you know. <laughs> but I still feel that way. Had you stayed in the classroom, how old are you now, 68? I am 64, I'll be 65. Oh, 65. You'd still have 23 years to reach me now. <laughs> this is my 60th, what, 60, I have 54 here and 10 in public school. This is 64, this is my 65th year. So you'd be still teaching. You'd still be teaching. <laughs> well, you know, I, I taught throughout my uh, tenure as headmaster. I uh, insisted on that and I loved it. And I stole your public speaking course. Did you, did you do that? I, I reached out to you and I asked you for the notes and you were very generous. Uh, you sent me your three by five cards and um, I, use, I, I launched my course from that. And uh, St. Mary's students are known for their public speaking really? skills. I, I attribute that to you, Ralph. We had, uh, and you know, we had, I, I thought we had the finest because at that time I taught English, Bobby taught English and Hillary taught English. So what we did, we put the speech course, we all taught from the same notes and everything. So that we were able to go, Scott, I haven't, I can't tell you how, on these things, kids coming back and almost 95% of them say the speech course that's helped them because most of these kids I've been doing, you'd be amazed at what they have done. <laughs> I believe me, what they have done and they all have had to speak publicly and they all have, I don't know if we're doing it. Anyway, that's beside the point. I've been, I've been watching the interviews, uh, Matt Cotts and John Tafani and Cyrus Tifani, uh, Cyrus Masumi. They're also eloquent. And uh, you, you, I think you have a new calling, Ralph. You should have a late night talk show. You, you have <laughs> Letterman and uh, Carson. You, you, you bring out the best in everyone. I hope, I hope it works again here. So anyway, okay, so let's see. So you taught, how many years did you teach before you became head of uh, upper school? How many years were you just in the classroom? Right. So I came down to Palm Beach State School in 1983, same year that Hillary Mendoza started, and uh, we're still close friends. And I, Walter hired me to teach seventh and eighth grade 
history. And then I, I told him from the beginning that I aspired to administration and specifically I wanted to be a head of school. And he was very generous in mentoring me. And um, I guess I was there about two years or three years and he made me Dean of Discipline. And um, he gave me his black book, which Bobby Bales called his doomsday book. And Walter would write down the name of every child in middle school, grades uh, six through nine. And I was expected to make a notation every day if someone you know, got out of uniform or um, got thrown out of the lunchroom for being overzealous during a meal. And then um, Jack Thompson came and he made me head of the upper school. Um, and then eventually uh, he made me assistant head. Uh, but you know, Ralph, uh, you were instrumental um, in influencing me, not only in my career path, but um, in my career choices. I remember Walter Butler told me, when I told him I wanted to be a headmaster, he said, you know, there are two kinds of headmasters. You're gonna have to decide which one you wanna be. There, there are educational leaders and there are uh, fundraisers. And that, that held to be true, but I, I discovered there are other facets of headship. You know, some guys are board developers, some guys are professional development, but I knew that I wanted to be a teacher's headmaster. And by that, I mean, and you, this is your influence. I wanted to lead teachers because I felt that the teachers were the most important thing in the school. And um, throughout my tenure as headmaster, 24 years at St. Mary's, I worked hard to nurture, nourish, uh, inspire, feed, entertain the teachers and remind them that they were all about what happening at the school without them we would be done you know you're one of your biggest fans was in the school here dolly my wife she was one I'm of so, your i'm biggest. so glad you brought her up uh, uh, you know when i came to, to uh, Palm Beach day there were so many characters uh, madam so many stories about, and especially you should get a kick out of you'd be should be doing something would be going on one of her plays or something that she wrote her own plays remember that and you'd come flying in, photo op, photo op, <laughs> with your camera. You had to take a picture. <laughs> but she was one of your biggest fans, and and she's she that's and that was her idea too. She says, "Too bad he's not in the classroom. Too bad he didn't stay in the classroom." Well, I tell you, there's no uh, higher uh, degree of flattery than to hear that. And I again offer sincere condolences. Uh, we all lost someone very precious uh, with Dolly. Do you, she used to kid, we had, I had so many great laughs with, with Dolly. Do you, do you remember who she said I reminded her of? What movie actor? Oh, oh yes. Who was it? I, 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 but I remember her telling me. David Niven. David Niven. David <laughs> Niven. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so sophisticated. So swallow. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember is that you were one of, I, I'm, um, you know, I'm a big opera and symphony fan. Music, I love lines of music. I love Western music, but the only rock and roll one I ever really liked was uh, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen, Glory and Days, Glory. I can't days. believe you turned me on to Bruce Springsteen. You, you turned me on to Bruce Springsteen. No, you knew him. You'd jog through town with the towel rolled up yeah, around yeah. one hand and your earplugs in. And uh, I caught you one day after you were running and I said, what are you listening to in that thing? And you told me, Glory Days, Bruce Springsteen. And I went out the album and it became one of my favorites. You were in your motorcycle days in New Jersey. You said you had gone to some shows by Bruce Springsteen when they were That's right. started or that, right? Yeah. And I saw him at uh, Westchester State back in, had to be 1978. And when I went to the concert, I said, who is this guy? And somebody told me and the next week he was on the cover of Time Magazine. His daughter's a big horsewoman out here in Wellington, you know. She's going to be on the American equestrian team in the Olympics. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, oh. yeah, yeah. She's a big, in the equestrian world, yeah. She's a world-class jumper, world-class. Huh. Uh, I think he has a residence in Rumson, New Jersey. Um, and, you know, he and I were born in the same hospital, Riverview Hospital, Red Bank. Oh, really? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we, we both have the waters of the Navasink River coursing through our veins. So, so how are you, Ralph? How, huh? are you how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Scott, I feel I'm better now than I ever was. 
I know more. I've seen it all. <laughs> I've seen it all. I've seen the different phases come in and this and that and that. And, and, and I'm more and more convinced, Scott, it comes down to you got to work, kids. You've got to work. I'm sorry. There's no shortcut. You've got to do it. You work for me and you're going to do fine. You don't work for me. Things aren't going to work out. And you I, used to tell me uh, that the, 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 the mantra at the steel mills was you got to put in your time. Get your time. I got time. <laughs> got to put in your time. Put in your time. You know, Ralph, I take this opportunity. I, I thank you for the generations of students and teachers that you have influenced, the careers that you have shaped, my own included. You were you were Jiminy Cricket, and again, I'm not I'm not blowing smoke here, but when I was confronting decisions in leadership, I always think, what would Ralph do? What would Ralph do? You mentioned, uh, you know, when I was head of the upper school at Palm Beach Day, I, when there was something on the table that was going to be a difficult conversation in a faculty meeting, I would come to you beforehand. Do you remember that? Yeah, I and I would I would seek your guidance, and I would I would even sometimes say, so which way is this going to go? You know, one thing I do remember about you, though, and I don't know if you remember this, we had uh, during some of the meetings, I forget, it was while Jack was here, it was while Jack was here, and it was his idea, and he broke us up, and it, but during this meeting, these meetings lasted all day or that, we had to write, we had to do some writing, we had to do some writing, and then we had to exchange with other people and give the thing, and that's the first time I have it had ever seen any of your writing. And I remember reading it and I'm thinking, this guy's a writer. This guy, this is something else you could have done had you decided not to go into teaching. Do you realize that? Seriously, there, how do I know? Oh, I don't know, what the hell do I know? But I do know this, I, I, I know writing when I see writing. And I, and, I, and I think I told you, I said, hey, you write, do some writing, do some, you're still young enough. You can still write that great novel. You can still write. I remember, I remember that day vividly. I remember, remember it. I remember it. Yeah. I remember it. I remember it vividly because I was really surprised at how good it was. Have you done any writing? I've done professional writing. I don't uh, mean. Have you done any? Decided to do any? Think about it. You're how old did you say? I'm 64. I've tried. I've tried. I've taken. I've taken a couple swings at it, uh, but yeah. I haven't really devoted the time yet. Now I have time. So you have time. Do it. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You are you still writing? I'm still working at it. I'm still working. I'm lazy, though. You know, when you get lazy, you know, a lot of the kids, the good writers I've had, and then all of them would, when I could see that they're really interested, and they would always come up and say, well, Mr. Greco, what advice do you have? I want to be a writer. I was, oh, you want to be a writer? And a lot of these kids, some of them were getting ready to go to college. And I'd say, well, you're going into college. The only thing I recommend there is... Uh, Take a wide variety of courses. Be sure you're going to probably be in the liberal arts if you're the, but be sure you take some science courses. You want to be at least familiar with that, et cetera, et cetera. And the only other, and two other points of advice I have next stay away from English departments. They don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. That. They're going to give you advice on writing. If they if they knew what they were doing, they'd be writers. No, you wouldn't be teaching English in college. <laughs> and the most important thing of all, if you want to be a writer, read. You have to write. You have to write. You got to get up every day, and you have to do some writing. If you don't feel like it, you still got to do some writing. You can't make excuses. You can't say, oh, the environment doesn't suit me. I have to go. No, no, that's BS. If you want to be a writer, write. And eventually, if it happens, it's going to happen. You'll see. And I, and I from everything, all biographies I've read, that works. That works. Uh, I remember one kid said, well, how about my style? I said, your style, tell your style. Your style will come out when you write. That's your, that's, that'll be your style. Don't worry about style, write. <laughs> yeah, I saw your interview with uh, Meredith Bagby. Uh, she's become quite a writer. And of course- Oh, Meredith, yeah. News. Think, you, you shape their, their talents. Uh, that's she, amazing. 
she I remember her she in speech classes when she uh, and she did that book she wrote that book what is it about the economy uh, the, the guy who ran for president what was his name Barb you remember the guy who ran for president she oh, did uh, the guy from Texas uh, the yeah, yeah. Ross Perot. Perot, yeah, she wrote that book and she worked for him during the campaign and everything. That's right. Yeah, we've had some, uh, we've had some, some Scott on these interviews. Some of the kids, some of the things that have done. Uh, I mean, amazing, amazing. Uh, you were you here? Could you have been here? No, you weren't here. Uh, Carrie Emanuel, that name familiar? No, no, you weren't here yet. Carrie lived across the street from me. He, uh, he went to private school somewhere, went up north anyway. Went on to MIT, MIT, graduated from MIT, stayed there. Now, every year after about five, 10 years during the hurricane season, and when a hurricane's coming, you know, every TV full of hurricane, and I'd see him on every year because Carrie Emanuel is one of the world's leading authorities on hurricanes. <laughs> really? We, we did the, uh, he, he did my second or third interview here. And he said, he's getting ready. He may retire this year. He's written 10 books and everything's on hurricanes. <laughs> so, so some of these, these kids, uh, my first interview this year was with um, Kathy Rampell. Do you remember the name Rampell? Yes, I remember Kathy. She was in my daughter's class. She was in your daughter's class. Mm -hmm. She now writes, you know, for the Washington Post. Very an accomplished. She's on the news. Regularly. An editorial writer. Yeah, she was in my sixth grade and uh, she was something. She was something, believe me. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Celery Kemble writes. Celery, um, Celery Kemble. Sharon and I were uh, in New York for some reason. Gosh, it had to be 10, 12, maybe 15 years ago. And I reached out to Celery at her office. Um, and I just said, want to get together for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Um, and she said, yes. And then she wrote back and said, well, I'm kind of busy. I'm actually having a book signing at my apartment. And she, she invited us up. And um, we got to see her, where she, her residence. Yeah. She was so, so kind and uh, gracious. Yeah, really. I, I interviewed her, by the way. I interviewed her, by the way. What other kids that you probably had did we interview? John Tafani and Adam Wilson. Adam Wilson. Now, Adam, you know, Adam was one of my favorite people. He was. Me a, too. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was, he was a force to be reckoned with. Wasn't oh, he? he was. But once you got to know him, he'd do anything for you. You know? Oh, he's a puppy dog. You remember and that was during that time the kids were cleaning the rooms. You remember that work crew, huh? Work crew, work crew. <laughs> the most miserable fifteen minutes of the day. Oh, you know, the, the school was filthy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's teaching over here now. He's teaching in one of the high schools here in Palm Beach, in West Palm Beach. Yeah. But I, I followed his career, and uh, you know John Tafanian uh, for years was uh, a, uh, an attorney in D.C. Yeah. When I would take the eighth graders up from my school, he he, he would join us for dinner, and I would get to spend time with him. He's a great guy. Cyrus Masumi, you remember Cyrus, Cyrus? and Leela Masumi. Leela, I didn't do Leela, but I did Cyrus. You know Cyrus, he got sick one day or something, and he he was out of town and needed a doctor. Couldn't get a doctor or something. So he got this idea. He started this computer thing where you could get a doctor no matter where you are. Grew into a million. <laughs> I, I, I understand he sold it for millions of dollars. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Very successful and very humble. I saw his. Yeah, his, nice his, kid. Uh, nice kid. Great, great kid. I remember his parents were so, so nice. Um, were, were they related to the Weltons? Uh, I remember. Uh, Soraya and Bijan. Bijan, I remember, yes. Wonderful. Tell, Ralph, tell me, are they still doing the uh, presentations at commencement where the teachers speak? Yes, yes, yes. 
that was such a highlight. I, I think Jack Thompson brought that tradition. Yeah, uh, Jack brought that. That was one of the best things he ever did. Oh, yeah, and you knocked it out of the park. Oh, my gosh, I could hardly wait to hear you uh, speak about your, your students. You know what I did? I didn't. I used to tell the kids in speech class, you're going to give a speech, eye contact, 100% during the introduction, 100% during the conclusion, 90% during the body of the speech. Remember that? So you couldn't read your speech. You could not, you had to know it well enough so that you, yeah, you could glance down if you lose at that. But the secret, of course, is preparation. Every minute you're up there, I use- Two minutes. To, yeah, that's right. So I figured I couldn't write my speech and read it because the kids would say, hey, wait a <laughs> So that's why I never would, I, I just couldn't do it. I, and they were short enough that I could get, get by with that. I could keep everything up there. <laughs> you know, Ralph, I don't know if you remember this. Um, one year, uh, Vanessa Elias uh, was graduating and I was her presenter because she was one of my- um, uh, Oh, Canada. Yes. Oh, Canada. <laughs> but I was, I had prepared to, to sing to her and I'd worked at, I practiced with Eunice Stelrick and I'm sitting in the audience next to Hillary Mendoza. And Hillary was the only person who knew I was going to do this. I was going to sing Oh, Canada. And you got up and presented one of your uh, ninth graders for commencement. I turned to Hillary. I said, I can't do it. I can't follow. I can't follow that. And, and Hillary prodded me. And she said, yes, you can. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. But I remember that you did a good job on that. I didn't know you had such a voice. I didn't know you had. Um, I remember on those um, uh, Cyrus Masumi, Dahl did his. Dahl yes. did his. Yes. And what she did, she went to Mrs. Tufanian. And she had Miss, Mrs. Tufanian translate a line, the introduction to her speech in Farsi. So Dahl got up and gave that intro in Farsi because Mrs. Tufanian wrote it out for her. So I, I thought that was neat. She was able to do that. <laughs> I, I remember Dolly did such a wonderful job with that presentation. She had such a heartfelt yeah. style of speaking. It was, it was great. So do you, how about, do you, um, how about Carol Rafter? You hear from Mrs. I Rafter? I did her Saturday, uh, yesterday, uh, no, uh, Friday, Thursday. I did her Thursday. She looked great. She's still in real estate, selling real estate. Really? Oh, yeah. Really. We were so fortunate to work with so many great teachers, uh, you know, Barbara yeah. being one of them, and Barbara, your mom, uh, Carol I'm Bales. Here waiting to come up to see Barb's room. I'm sitting in a the lobby there. Who goes by? Claudia Finney. Remember Claudia? No. Wait, was she here? Maybe. I don't think so. Oh, wait, how long ago did you... 1996. I was there from 1983 to 1996, 13 years. That would have been four. That's 25. I think she only has 23 years. Huh. So she wouldn't have been here. She's head of our French department. Great lady. Great lady. Ca Carol Bayless used to babysit uh, my, Amelia. Amelia. So she babysat Amelia when I went to Neil Pilch's wedding. Neil Pilch. Have you heard from Neil anything? Yes. He just retired. He retired, uh, retired a year before I did. And he was head at Monsanto Country Day out in New Mexico. I never thought Neil Pilch would end up in New Mexico, of all places. I, I tried to picture him with a cowboy hat on riding over <laughs> the uh, prairie. <laughs> oh, my. How about another tradition? Do they still do the beginning of the year uh, beach picnics? Yes. Yeah, bar. I haven't been to one in three, four years. I, I didn't go to those. Once Walter, I Walter assigned me to work the barbecue with uh, Robert Viewa, remember Robert La Rope? Rope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we were cooking the hamburgers. You were always the first one at the station. You, were, you must have eaten three or four hamburgers in a day. I don't know, I don't know where you put it. Oh, I'd go, I'd go. I love hamburgers, cheeseburgers, especially. <laughs> and they let the kids work the uh, soda truck. They let the, they've yeah. enjoyed that more than anything else. Yeah, there were a lot of, the, then of course, the field day. I'm sure you have some memories from field day. The, uh, I do. 
Interesting. You should mention that, you know, in headmaster school, they teach you never change anything your first year, just watch, listen, and then start making changes. Well, when I came to Tampa, I came to St. Mary's, everyone complained about this event they called the carnival. The teachers hated it. They would shut down the school for the day and they would bring in all these, you know, inflatables and face painting and the kids would just run wild. Then it was a safety concern. So that was the only change I made that day, uh, that, my, that my first year, I did away with the carnival and I started a field day. Field day. And I named it after a former headmaster, a guy named Jack Shepard, John Shepard, who was on the evaluating team at Palm Beach Day School. He came uh, before I went to St. Mary, really nice guy. And um, he started his career at the Peck School in Morristown like I did. So I named it field day after him and they're still going strong. This year was the 25th annual field day. Oh, it lends itself to tradition, everything, everything. Beautiful. But I didn't do it on a Saturday. You didn't do it on a Saturday? No, I did it on a weekday. During the weekday. I remember one year at Palm Beach Day School, we are all lined up on the field for the start of field day. And I think it was the Millers, Holly Miller, Mosey Miller's mom hired a plane to fly over the field, dragging a banner that said, go Pelicans. Go Pelicans. <laughs> Mosey Miller, remember Mosey, the boy? Yeah. He has uh, three sons in school now here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Three, Barb? Five. He has five sons in school. Here. Five sons? <laughs> Prolific breeder. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Uh, so when I was dean of discipline, one of my daily responsibilities was to break up fights between Mosey Miller and Joe Liebman. They Joe were constantly at each other's throats. <laughs> Oh boy! Great times, Ralph. We really did. And I again, I thank you for your your influence, your patience, your guidance. Uh, you were really kind to me. You know, one of the most poignant moments of my life. Um, my daughter was born in 1985, and back in those days, you got one day off. You know, you go to the hospital, take your wife home, and then go back to work. And I arrived at the school that morning, and you met me on the sidewalk, and you put your hand on my shoulder. And you said, congratulations, Scott. I want you to know you are starting the best years of your life. <laughs> and truer words were never spoken. Yeah. I, the, the, you were well, so right. And I said you? the same thing to so many young teachers who have started their families uh, in, my, in my school. How old is she now? Amelia is 30, she was born in 85, so 34. 34, I imagine that. Yeah. Man, yeah. Those the best Locked are under the bridge. Those are the best. Those are the best. And you don't realize it until you get old and you're all alone. Believe me. When you... <laughs> you still have family in Aliquippa? Oh yeah. I still haven't been up there in four or five years though. Haven't been up there four or five years. You used to make a southern you a drive. You in the summertime you would get a car and drive up and would smoke some cars. I'd go up there or I'd go to Maine. I'd you go to Maine up to Bar Harbor for a couple of weeks up there, things like that. Beautiful country. Beautiful country, beautiful country. So listen, Scott, that's about it. Here we are now. We got to get together someday. Next time- I would love that. Give me a call and I'll take you and your wife out to dinner. You understand? I promise. If we're on that coast, it'd be my first visit. Be there. You see your family, your mom and dad, tell them I send my best and your kids too. Okay. Thanks, Ralph. It's been wonderful spending time with you. I wish okay. you the best. Don't forget, do some writing. <laughs> <laughs>